Ah, right now it's springtime. Winter is fading away and the signs of summer are appearing. But for some, skiers and snowboarders are chasing after what remains of winter in style. Interestingly, when a resort is about to close and during the countdown to closing day, it seems very revelrous. I always call it the ender sender and people really turn it into a party. Some of these resorts have crazy traditions. Last day on hill at any ski area is when you're going to see the freak flag fly. You know, you see a lot of people in bikinis, you see people streaking the slope, you see kegs brought up on hill. It, it's one of the days that even if you black out, you're not going to forget it. It seems like it's ritual at every resort. But Mount Bachelor may stand out more than most. Closing weekend at Mount Bachelor is kind of a Hoorah, uh, barbecue in the parking lot, beer drinking. They do a big pond skim up there. Uh, it's just like springtime, good time vibes. But we're not here to tell the story of those traditions. What's the vibe here right now, closing weekend? Oh, uh, there's a lot of alcohol. Uh, yeah. I've smelled I've some been, marijuana. Uh... What do you think about shorts and shades? You talking about those crazy mofos? Shorts and shades are sexy. If you're talking about the ski group, they're fucking baller. <laughs> this is the story of how three friends, Max Warmington, Gus Warmington, Logie B, and their buddies turned a week of snowboarding and skiing in their shorts and shades into an annual event and cult snowboard video series. This is the story of shorts and shades. Trey squad! Trey squad for the race squad! I'm in the fight! I did an ollie! Hey, can I just get a really good pose? Hold on. Let me get in. Ooh, that's good. Thank you. Hey, jump me, Max! Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! Shorts and Shades is the culmination, I think, of one of the best parts of snowboarding. It's basically like a group of friends that gets bigger every year, and they're just like, okay, for like two days or a week, we're you know going to go to the mountain and party board. The fulcrum is wearing shorts and shades. I think shorts and shades is just a good like representation of what's like possible for just like kids these days. Like you don't need major movie production budgets. This is just like three, four little kids together making these little edits that it turned out everyone loved them and they kept making them year after year. How did uh, Shorts and Shades come about? I remember it was like me and my brother and Lucas Wax and Logan, our friend Beef, Ian Borgman and Wilson McLean. I remember being over here we were upstairs in Max and Gus's room. We were gonna go to the mountain, it was sunny and super hot. We wanted to make a video. It was like, what can we do to like kind of spice up this video? And we were just like, dude, like tomorrow, let's just like, let's just wear shorts and like shades. And we went up and just rode one day and it was really fun and we filmed with the handy cam. Where are you stuff here? Yeah, kind of hash. And at that time, it seemed so funny to snowboard in shorts. We were just feeling loose got home and the footage was just like absolutely hilarious. The very first edit that we made, year one, I made it on my parents' computer on like Windows Media Movie Maker or some shit like that. I was like kind of like dipping into metal. I kind of liked metal music, but we'd always use like rap music in our edits. I asked Katie Williams for some metal music because I knew that she was like into it. And she gave me a Three Inches of Blood CD. We used Deadly Sinner song in the very first edit. And we we're like, oh my god, this like completely like makes it. So 
fucking cold. Snow just like shooting up my pants. You got like shit? No. Uh, Alright, we're out. That's a wrap. We just immediately were like, this needs to be a thing. We need to like do shorts and shades every single year. The next year, we didn't do it on the same day because it was bad weather. Then it came around to like closing weekend and we got more friends stoked on it and a lot more people joined in the second time and we just were like, all right, this is gonna be like a thing now. Like first two we made got like no views at all. We just like made them for ourselves pretty much. The third year was like a crazy year and the level of riding kind of was a little crazier. So the video was like a lot better. That was like the first good video. And then the Helgensons.com like posted it on their website. And at that time that was just like a huge website. We didn't think anybody watched them and then they posted that and like we got a ton of views. And Haldor, he posted it and was just like, this is the sickest ever. After that, we were like, dang, we got to make all these videos like pretty crazy now. Yeah. Your typical edit, we pretty much figured out the formula right off the bat. It is like a long edit that's pretty much just everyone's wearing shorts and shades and everyone's just sending it. There's always metal music in every single edit. Do you think the edits are long? Yeah, oh for sure. <laughs> They're super long. I think last year's was like half an hour. Shorts and Shades edits are notorious for being super long. They've always been like that from the start. And uh, we have had some pushback from people. The one notable time this happened, Yobi refused to post one of our edits. At the beginning, they're big supporters. I got an email back from them that said like, yeah, it'd be great if you could shorten this down to like three minutes and take out the skiing. And they're talking about like a half an hour video that we worked our asses off on and it's, we're not gonna fucking change it. So just kind of told them to fuck off. Shorts and Shades was unique in that they really got the fun vibes across. It wasn't about the best style or the coolest tricks necessarily. It was what was entertaining to them. They weren't trying to pander to anybody but themselves. Most edits that are, are kind of like more serious edits in terms of how they're made and how they're edited are uh, show the makes. They don't show the behind the scenes, they don't show the crashes, they don't show like the ridiculousness and shorts and shades is completely the opposite of that where they show everything. They're not trying to you know, fit within a two and a half minute like constraint. They're like, let's just put out all the stuff that we really like and share that. Oh! The goal is to make like a comedy snowboard video. That just hits hard. Oh Everyone's closing weekend at like every mountain is kind of crazy. I think the thing that stands out about this is because it's a video, so we're like always filming, and I think that makes people kind of want to like do crazy stuff. <laughs> Oh! 
Shorts and Shades 5, Austin Ford brought his friend Cherokee Jake, and he really pioneered the intro for Shorts and Shades. Hey, we're out here, Christmas break. Came out to visit uh, the relatives out here with the fam. Taking some turns, sun's out. It's having a real nice day out here. Uh, we got Brenda over here holding the handy cam. Kids uh, learned how to ski this morning, but they're uh, they're in the lodge now. It's been a good trip. Just like this perfect intro and it just set the bar like so high for what the, all the rest of the intros needed to be and that made it a lot more fun for us to make. Well, we're up here right now. It's last day. I'm just super sorry to tell you guys that we couldn't make a video this year for Shorts and Shades. Like, I got hurt ribs. Nobody really showed up. The weather was just super crappy. So I'm just sorry. Like, we'll be back next year. I swear to God. Like, I'm sorry. Psych, bitches! Shorts and Shades 6, coming at you live! Shorts and Shades 6 with Sage Kotzenberg was there for that one. It's your boy Chaz Savage, here at Shorts and Shades 6. <laughs> they always do it on the last weekend, closing weekend of Mount Bachelor. You'd think that it was all just uh, fun and games, having fun under the sun, but they've had a lot of Shorts and Shades where it's snowing out. Whoop! Get up here one more time! Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah! Shorts of Jade 6! Yeah! Oh. Respect the commitment to go through with shorts in the shades while it's snowing. They had this like corrugated tube feature that was in the park up on this spine, barely hanging on. And so we just start slamming it to try to knock it out. And we knock it out, it starts rolling, everyone's jibbing it as it's rolling. And we totally had like a little discussion, I remember up top, like, should we roll this down or should we just leave it right here? Like, everyone was just like, fuck it, shorts and shades, like push it down the hill. It's really dumb that we did that, but it, you know, it's just like, we're just, we're just on it, you know, we're like getting it. And we end up putting it like in the landing of the jump and we are jumping on it. Oh. <laughs> the session was just getting really crazy and it was like the last hit of the day and Austin Ford. Skin. We were all yelling, we're like, oh, let's rip this rail out. Rip this thing out. We came in and we started rolling the rail down the hill. Oh, look out! Oh, oh. <laughs> oh look out! <laughs> what? <laughs> it just like happened and it was this random dude who was up there when the mountain wasn't open. And like we went down and talked to him later. He like hiked back up. That was awesome. I get in the air and the pipe's twisting. Yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I better just ride it. You couldn't have reenacted it in a million years. Shorts of shades. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like a little time went by and we released the video and then I got this email. Bachelor was very not happy with that. It was basically saying that like we like caused all this damage to the mountain. Oh! Yes. Jump close. Maybe not. Shorts and Shades is 
oftentimes the fear of a mountain because it's very loose and rogue and seems like it could be dangerous. Ski areas aren't known for being the most forward thinking bunch. Fuck it! Shit. And rightfully so. In reality, you know, Shorts and Shades is a testament to how much everyone that participates loves riding there. You know, that's the hub that brought a lot of the crew together. There's definitely been some times where, like, they've threatened to not give me and Gus passes or to block our passes off if we're doing it again. After year seven or eight, when everyone was breaking stuff, Max and I, I remember we were like, let's keep it loose, let's keep it crazy. No one's breaking anything, though. You know, we gotta respect this place. Like, this is our this is our place, dude. And these people, like, they build this stuff for us. And like, there's no reason to like break it. Shorts and Chase 7, we kind of make fun of Sean White. What do you guys say, run through the pipe on the way down? Oh, yeah, yeah, it looks sick. Use this a section from his Red Bull half by private video thing. He's sitting there and he's like, the pipe is perfect. Every single wall was just untouched. Look down the line, you can't even see a, a little divot. Not even the slightest little, yeah, it was perfect. And so it just pans up to the pipe and we took the song from that video, then it goes up to Gus and you still can't see what the pipe. And he's just up there, drop! <laughs> he goes in and then it's just like you realize that the pipe is just like this sticky horrible thing that he can't even get to the next wall and so that just got a lot of laughs and <laughs> slow down and then also one of the crazier enders we've ever had in a video which was austin ford and his friend david Young at Shorts and Shades, wouldn't it be that bad? Shorts and Shades 8, Bachelor had like the lowest snow year they've had in a long time. And so after the mountain had closed, they had to close early. We decided to do a session up there on some leftover park features. We were like jumping over a fire. <laughs> There's always someone comes out of nowhere and just goes for it. This insane kid, Brent, who came through for both the days and filmed some of the funniest footage we've ever got. Go for it. Oh! 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 For Shorts and Shades 9, we had great weather the whole time, did a crazy intro. It's gotta be somewhere. The all right, let's look on the other side of the dam. We really went all out with the intro for 9 and did like a full acting skit about the portal to the mountain. You guys! I got it! I got it! Get over here! Look at this. It says two men enter, one man leave. Shall we enter? You and me, buddy. Holy shit, you guys. This is terrifying. This goes far. This is truly- Logan, come on, come on, dude. This is truly terrifying. Oh, straight up just saw something move. That was a rat. <laughs> Shorts and shades nine, let's do this. <laughs> You guys think this is it? Might be. Is it? No way. 
Holy shit, you guys. It's real. We did an upper summit bowl sesh that for shorts and shades. Oh. <laughs> yeah! Oh, There was like this kid who was super wasted and he was in a minion suit. We were like hitting this feature. Everybody did insane shit. No! Oh! Woo! Clean! Woo! Clean! Woo! Clean! Finally! Wow. About fucking time. About right. freaking time! Cody, oh God. Oh! 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 Ah! And that happened back to back. I was just like, oh, that was insane. And then I just pan the camera around. Oh my God, dude. Oh! <laughs> Tumbled down the hill and he had all this padding on his suit, so he was like, fine. <laughs> the last few years we've given out like an official MVP of Shorts and Shades award where we like spray paint these little plastic sunglasses. And so we've been giving MVPs out to people like Austin Ford got one. Austin, you ready to shred? Every year he goes, it's like a whole other level of looseness. <laughs> oh! Shorts and shades, bitch. Pants. <laughs> Shorts and shade seven, he's coming down, no foot at the end of the run. Where are we at? Uh, we're at deep in the cascades right now, about to get vertical. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> are you okay? And he just gets up totally fine. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Dude, something about shorts on and bachelor, it's like, I feel a little more invincible. <laughs> Will Dennis got one. Shorts and shades, eight pitches! Yeah! Whoa! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. on all cylinders. And Jared Elson got one. When I think of shorts and shades, I think of like Lucas walks. Like the only skier, just like absolutely sending. Oh! Welcome to Mount Bachelor. About to fuck shit up. <laughs> he was like the MVP every single year for so oh! long. He tried this gap that was, it was probably like 80 feet maybe. It was just like the gnarliest thing I'd ever seen at that point in my life. <laughs> Standout shredders to me for Shorts and Shades are definitely Destry and Stratton Madison. You're a legend! Both Stratton and Destry have had classic shots throughout the years from sending the cornice to like launching hips huge and both just badass shredders with really original style. What? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. One. Oh my <laughs> God. Watch out. Oh my god! 
since like the beginning of Shorts and Shades, we've always filmed with just like a tiny little point and shoot video camera. There's no better feeling sitting on the knuckle of a jump with a tiny little handy cam trying to film 50 snowboarders going off a jump at the exact same time. <laughs> what the fuck? The handy cam is the only thing we've ever used filming shorts and shades. We got the battle of the handy cams here. Wall, wall, battle of the handy cams. There's actually Chet Vision. It's like the only GoPro shots we've really ever used. Shorts and shades on, bitches! So go ahead and tell us who is Chet. Okay, I think I can best describe who Chet is by describing the first time that I met him. Um, we were in the middle of filming for Shorts and Shades 9. Um, went to the bar after a day of filming. Uh, just walked in, just kind of hanging out. Noticed a guy kind of hanging by himself. And he was wearing this really sick, like, old Limp Biscuit t-shirt. Next day... And we were like in this train going in for this small jump line. And right when I'm about to go off the lip, this dude snakes me and calls me a pussy as he does it. And we go off the jump and I was just like so dumbfounded at what, as to what happened. But I noticed the same Limp Biscuit shirt that I saw in the bar the night before. So just instantly had respect for the dude. Um, caught up with him at the bottom of the chair. Uh, caught the chair up with him. Then I started telling him about like what we were doing with shorts and shades and like why are these people were like, you know, riding in sunglasses and shorts and he thought it was all right, but he was just kind of like mad that everyone was getting in his way. And um, but then, I, he, and then I was like, well, you should just join in. He's like, well, the filmers won't even point the cameras at me. I already tried. So I offered him my GoPro that I had in my car. Yeah, shit! <laughs> <laughs> And then a legend was born. Is Chuck coming back for Shorts and Shades 10? Uh, I don't know if Chuck's coming back for Shorts and Shades 10, but after Shorts and Shades 9, I never got my GoPro back. And just like a few weeks ago, I got a package, opened it up, and my, it was my GoPro. And there was this footage of like, I think it was like Mexico. Or now there are rumors that you and Chet are the same person. I don't even know what you're talking about. I've met the guy like one time. Are you sure? Yeah. You guys look pretty similar. I don't know, man. I mean, I've got a couple doppelgangers out there, but I don't know. Don't really know that guy very well. He just shows up for shorts and shades. It is May 21st. Shorts and shades starts tomorrow. We're on our way over to Best Buy, going to grab a new camera, a fresh handy cam. Ours has been holding strong for like four years, but it's looking pretty sketchy coming into this year, so we figured might as well just get a new cam. I don't think there's any way to adjust the focus on this. Make sure I got it and it's done. And go into your check. Sweet. Got it, baby. We're all ready for this weekend. Now, why? Um, have people film with nicer cameras. It's just part of the whole tradition, the risk of shorts and shades is we just pass the camera and then whatever happens, happens. So that's my favorite part about it. You never know. And that's why the footy review is so fun. You never know what happened during the day because it's not like you have one filmer. Everyone's passing it off and so just crazy stuff happens and things happen that you don't even realize. Oh my 
god. Yeah! In recent years, we've had so many moments where like you hand the camera off to someone who you don't even know if they're good at filming or not. And they'll just like, you'll watch the footage later and it's just like blurry or like they reverse recorded something. Or... <laughs> we try as hard as we can to keep it under control up there. So it is a little bit harder to stay on good terms with them. Hey, it's Max, um, just up here, just shredded. First day of shorts and shades. Uh, it was epic, but we've got the dude who's making the documentary up here and we were wondering if we could do an interview with you. Give me a call back later and we'll talk about it. Peace. Temperature. He's basically our only one on, who's on our side for Shorts and Shades, even though he probably doesn't want me to say that, but... Hey, this is RJ McNichols calling. Uh, I am a friend of Max and Gus Warbington's and I'm currently making a documentary on Shorts and Shades and I was wondering if you were available for interview sometime this week. Uh, I know that you and Mount Bachelor have some particularly interesting views on Shorts and Shades, and either way, let me know. Uh, give me a call back. Every single year, there's more and more people that come. It's more like a gathering now. It's more like, like everyone's invited. People just want to like come and like see the chaos, or be in the chaos. Oh! Oh! Right now we have arriving, we have <laughs> Sam Taxwood, Dustin Clark, Matt Bernard, and Malnus. Can't pronounce his last name. Just rolling up. There they are. Just quit my job in Utah to be at Shorts and Shades 10. Heard it was a big year, so I uh, had to come up here, support the Warbington family, and um, huge fan of everyone's work around here. Just wanted to be part of the action for one year. I drove up from Salt Lake City. Saw all the previous edits and just knew I wanted to be part of it. It feels like the Super Bowl to me. I'm just like, they got the insane roster and you know, it's got the history and I'm just like the guy who won the radio sweepstakes. What was your first impressions of those videos? The epitome of a uh, closing day. The whole persona, the atmosphere of, of the edit is, is I think what makes it really special. Like everyone goes to make edits on resorts and do tricks because obviously a lot of edits that come out are very serious or trying to be artistic and whatnot. The, the Shorts and Shades videos, they just had like a whole different vibe of just like really like end, like last week of the resort. Like everyone's sending it, everyone's wearing weird stuff. The last days of other resorts, usually like a bunch of tools wearing like, I don't know, like muscle shirts and just trying to ride his pond skin, but here, we fuck shit up. The time I ever shot, saw Shorts and Shades, I knew, I knew, uh, I couldn't handle it. I've gotten too old. They're too, they're too good, they're too gnarly. Um, they always land on their feet. I always land on my head. They don't want me there. I'm just gonna bring down the vibe. Ultimately, it looked like a really fun time. First couple years, I was too cool or something. I was dumb. I was trying to film with my pants on and goggles on, trying to get clips before the season ended. Little did I know, Shorts and Shade was gonna be a decade running event. So, I got with the times. Just feeling the energy of everybody boarding together, it's like the sickest thing ever. That's like why we all snowboard, you know, and sometimes during the winter and filming and going on your solo trips all the time, you forget about just like the like energy you have just boarding with a huge crew of homies and just like pushing each other and just having fun. It's kind of like a similar thing to like filming in the backcountry or doing a big contest, you know, it's the same session mentality where everyone's just getting stoked on each other. And they started something pretty sweet, like there wouldn't be all the kids that are up here today just boarding and having fun like they are. And we need that, you know, snowboarding needs that. And it's cool that these guys started this when they were super young and they've kept it going for so long. They kind of started a movement bringing party boarding back. Shorts and Shades to me now is kind of an accomplishment, to be honest. I'm 25 years old. I still do these things with my friends, still get together every year. I love anything that has to do with like getting people together. Some of my best childhood memories are like during Shorts and Shades and witnessing some of that stuff go down. Shorts and Shades is so cool to me. I mean, I have it tattooed on me. You know, that's why most people like make these like videos and edits and stuff. Like, yeah, they want to like show off and shit like that, but like something cool that you like capture. It's like moments. Everyone's like so excited for year 10. We're gonna do it bigger and better than ever. And then we're just kind of gonna call it. 
we pretty much decided to call it at 10 a few years ago. It was partially because of all the drama with Bachelor. Like, we just knew we couldn't keep this up forever. Like, eventually they would just, like, shut us down completely. And it just seemed like you can only do so much with the videos. And I feel like we've done a good job every year of, like, making each video a little different. If we continue on past 10, it might just get kind of repetitive. Why not just do a big blowout, like, last one and, and then just call it good? And so what am I gonna like keep doing it until I'm super old? I don't know. It's crazy that they would make that claim because you know they're probably gonna do a reunion. Yeah, I hope that like when they're like all in their late 40s, it like comes back for like another one, like the 20th anniversary of Shorts and Shades. I don't think it's gonna end because everybody is so into it. We're not even burnt out on it. It's year 10, dude, and we're like so hyped. I've been talking about this since July. I don't think it's gonna end, man. Maybe the filming, just the videos. Just the videos is gonna end. There's no way the locals here are gonna let that happen. For Shorts and Shades 10, I don't really know what's gonna happen. I think that everyone, there's more people coming than ever. I have high expectations. I think everyone's gonna get really crazy. And it's closing week, like, gotta go ballistic. <laughs> Shorts and shades, bitch. Shorts and shades m m m makes me happy. Oh! Shorts and shades! Oh! 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 Keep patrol radar, watch yourselves, boys. What is going down right now? We got the Shorts and Shades crew, and we're gonna get some insane snowmobiling footage. I hope oh, I got that. Oh <laughs> my god, dude.
Jake! Jake! Jake just went down on the snowmobile. Just butt slid a pile of rock. <laughs> That did not hurt. Austin? RJ? Yeah. You're in shorts? I'm wearing shorts. I can participate. I just watch from a from a distance. Too scared to participate. It's fucking going down. Big jumps, big spins. That's all that matters. That's how you end it. That was the finale. I'm so relieved. I'm so happy. I don't know how to break this. It's not doing I don't even care about chicks right now. I feel like I just had sex with the whole world. Chet's going back to Will. Hey, what's up, guys? Every year we give out the Golden Shades, goes to the Shorts and Shades MVP. This year, very special MVP, did a giant backflip, did all sorts of crazy shit. Destry Serna, we're gonna go find him, give him the shades. Destry? Wow! Shorts and Shades MVP. This is for Stratton! This is all for Stratton. I wouldn't be half a snowboarder without Stratton in my life. Yeah. Dirty beer Serena. All right, some of the highlights out of the week, and I hate to say it, but some of the skier tricks that I got to witness were, uh, were pretty impressive. Lucas walks, every man's border. I got to see my best friend fly off a cliff into a bunch of rocks and he's, he somehow survived.
어디 있으세요? So this time next year, Shorts and Shades is not going to happen. Right. People are in disbelief. Is Shorts and Shades ever going to happen again? Um, you know, I think.
It's fucking over. It's over. It's done! Ooh. <laughs>